This is the Bonus Section Podcast, episode number 23. Are you the biggest problem? Are you the type of person that knows you were meant for something greater in this lifetime and that somewhere inside of you, there's a bigger version of yourself just trying to break free, but in spite of all your self-development attempts, you just can't seem to find the way up? Well, you're definitely in the right place. I'm Danny Griffin, the founder of The Bonus Section and the host of this podcast. Now, I'm a person just like you trying to learn how to live the most fulfilling life possible. So to help you take immediate action and get moving in a better direction, we're going to take some notes here each time we do an episode and post them for a short time over at freethinkingtools.com so that you have some framework to go and work on yourself. Some are quiet, some are comfortable, freethinkingtools.com because the key to success in life is to constantly and never endingly work on yourself. All right, let's get started. Are you the biggest problem? I asked myself many times and I still do to this, uh, this day because it's become a strategy for me to keep grounded, to keep human, to keep humbled. You have to keep asking yourself, am I the problem in this situation? So let me hit the first point here. Our own anxiety, and I wrote down some other thoughts too, it's not just anxiety, it's fear, it's anger, it's frustration, it's overwhelm. All these things are, are really um, driving what are called cognitive distortions that cause us to try to make somebody the bad guy. Let me talk about this for a second, that over time as a coach for a very long period of time, you can see people get themselves worked up to, into a froth. And as a real estate agent, broker, coach, yeah, I can see it in that context all the time because we are dealing with one of the largest financial and emotional transactions people make in a lifetime. But with kids, I can see the same thing. Um, family, friends, whatever the scenario, marriages, partnerships, it doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's everywhere where our anxiety and our fear are all human and they're they're lingering at the base and they, they can when they're triggered they can cause these cognitive distortions and thanks to my sister who's a uh, teacher of special needs children for a very long time where she understood this and said oh you're really in this cognitive behavioral therapy world and you should know about these things. And nobody ever introduced me to that stuff because I didn't go to college for psychology. Um, I think I took a course here or there, but never really did I understand how important this is for life and personal self-development. You can Google cognitive distortion list and it'll come up and you'll, you'll see enough and there might be a little variance, but you'll get the point. Um, a cognitive distortion is, is the, the clouding of the lens. I've said this many times in the podcast. I'm a huge fan of Maxwell Maltz's work, The New Psycho-Cybernetics, which really means mind steering systems. Very important because he talks about that, that lens that we see the world through and we see ourselves through. That's the worst part. When you look in the mirror, you're actually looking through a lot of cognitive distortions. And they were caused by fear, anxiety, childhood issues, whatever. They distort the way we see the world, including ourselves. Very simple. This is all logical, commonsensical stuff. There's no, don't need a PhD to understand it. Don't let anybody tell you you do. I'm not practicing medicine and I'm not practicing psychology or psychiatry. <laughs> Certainly not. I'm not pres prescribing anybody. I'm just saying what I've learned is that it's the lens through which we see the world can be distorted. And when all those things well up and they cause those distortions, it's not natural for most of us, probably the majority of us, to look inwards. We tend to look outwards. And this is a matter probably of emotional intelligence. I mean, I've done this for years. Well, I didn't get what I wanted and I was frustrated. I would say I'm more, less anxious. That There have been moments in my life where anxiety totally ruled my life and it was a big crisis, an issue, but it was a shorter period of time where I probably spend more of my time being frustrated, angry, um, and never really overwhelmed because I'm a go-getter. But those are the things that are particular to me. So I've become aware of them and I see them. And I understand that they, they do make that cognitive distortive thing happen. And I look for, naturally, something else to blame, somebody else to blame. Of course, it couldn't be me, we say to ourselves, right? But it is us because that's the part of this we're in control of. How do we deal? And it's always about going to that lower level for me. What caused the anxiety to begin with? 
what, what happened there? I mean, I know it's existing there, that frustration, it's existing there. And so what is, what is the cause of that? Um, because if I'm going to stop blaming everybody else and you're going to stop looking for a bad guy, quote unquote, the bad guy, we make something or somebody else, the circumstances, politics, we're always looking for a bad guy. And there's plenty of ways to find one. And a lot of people are triggering you to call somebody else the bad guy and you can get it all out on them. Oh, the damage that it does to us and what it steals from us is just so painful for me to watch that I have to start to bring this up. So the second point is, if you're trying to figure this out and and what triggers you, then the second point is beware of your triggers and that they cause this negative reaction, which leads to something very interesting, negative language, very negative language. Listen to the words that you're using when you're triggered. When you really feel that heightened anxiety, frustration, anger, overwhelm, listen to what you are saying. It's powerfully negative most of the time. So not only do you want to look for a bad guy, and and like I said, it doesn't have to necessarily be a person. It can be a circumstance. It can be an orientation in the world. What's going on? The news loves to trigger us because it's not even news anymore. It's agitation is what it is. It's not just a description of fact. It is agitation in all subjects. So when that happens, it's it's the uh, sort of the gasoline, or the kerosene we're pouring on an already smoldering, anxious feeling, um, afraid feeling, all of these things. And so now we're negative. Well, if this so-and-so had only done this, and, and if if that party had done this, See, that's negative language and that's what's coming out of us. And, and really what it's doing is it's exacerbating. It's sort of like, you know, the sponge inside. We probably have these two good sponges inside of us. If you can imagine, this is the imagery I've been using lately in coaching is that if I pour water on this one sponge, in this case, you know, sponges would burn, but I'll use the analogy of water. It's expanding inside of us. So we give life to more anxiety. And the negative language exacerbates its more and it's growing and all of a sudden there's no room to even water the other sponge of positivity to help that grow. So we really have these two sponges which we can water and grow and the the worst part is all these negative triggers are so powerful and the world is, is such a negative orientation right now, especially through social, that, that because it's what sells, quote unquote, which is such crap. Let me just tell you, when you actually help people with positivity, it sells 10 times better than negative and it's sustainable and it's the right way to do things. So whatever you're doing, right? Or even if you're a student and you're, you're in school, you're just going to have a much better school experience if you're not letting all your own anxiety and your frustrations and everything trigger you. Right? This is why we have so many, so many problems at such a young age because we're allowing all this. Social media has now found its way into a much younger crowd and it's triggering them and it's making things worse. And who is teaching them this? Cognitive distortions are something that should be triggers or something that should be taught. All of this should be taught to children, young So if you're young and you're listening to this podcast, you need to understand this. You don't need to wait for some day when you take a psychology class. You need to know how this works now. Do your homework, that kind of homework, right? It's good homework. So if you become aware that, oh, when I watch politics, when I talk about religion, those are the two biggies, right? When I see something about a pandemic, when I see something about crime, when I see something about bullying, All those things and more, and the list goes on and on. Are any of them triggers for you? And if so, try to go back to, and it's okay, you just go back right into the the lion's den. How do I feel when I look at a post like this? It's different than just going on and looking at social and seeing all these posts and seeing what happens and and being unconscious, unconscious, he said, about what's happening. Be conscious. All right, I'm going to experiment today. I'm going to go listen to this person talk. Did it? What did it cause in me? I'm going to go read this post. What did it cause in me? And then as it bubbles up into a conscious thought now, not just unconscious, you are now saying words. Are they positive or negative? There they are for you to see. So the next point is, when you, when you hear that language and you know whether it's positive or negative, 
you need to solve that problem by sticking to the facts. So let's say it's negative. Let's just assume for the sake of the argument that what comes out of that cognitive distortion is negativity. It's negative language. Well, now you see it. So now it's like, okay, what do I do about this? Go back to the facts of the matter. So you can just go back and take this little inventory. You see, this becomes so simple. What is the cause? Am I anxious, afraid, overwhelmed, anger, you know, frustration? Look for some base, root cause. Try to figure out what triggered it, and you can test that. As long as you're walking around this week aware of that, next month, forever, you become aware of what is triggering you, what's triggering your anxiety, your overwhelm, etc. Right? You get the point. And then what negative language did I use and grab it and say, oh, okay, that's a clue that I need to go back to the facts. I just said this because this thing is underlying it. Be honest with yourself. If you're anxious, if you're scared, you're afraid, I know all you tough guys out there, right? Just admit, this is the way I'm, we're all human. We all, we all have these same types of feelings, these negative feelings. We have them all. It's part of the human condition. Just admit it. Stop fighting it because then you can go right to the fact what is the fact? I heard this. Somebody did that. What is the fact of the matter? And deal with it. Now, I will say this about professionals. If you need professional help to deal with it once you become conscious of it. And by the way, professionals would help you through the same process anyway. Their way. So if you need to go get therapy because you're really saying, oh my gosh, I'm finally recognizing this. I need some help because now it is a big thing. Now you recognize the white elephant in the room. Go for help. That's what you should do. Hopefully this podcast inspires more people to seek out therapy, to get the right bag of tools to deal with these things. I'm only trying to give you my experiences as a coach and as a, a, a doer of these very same things as a fellow human to say, look. What's better than working on yourself? I implored all of my kids. Anytime they they ran into a wall, my wife and I supported always go get some therapy. It will help you because it will build a bag of tools. And without us and the biases that family dynamics cause, go work on yourself with a good therapist to, to understand there's something big triggering this. And if there's something really traumatic that happened in your lifetime, you're going to have to deal with that professionally. You know, just, I mean, maybe some of you can self-heal, but why not get help? Because that will help you deal with the big white elephant so that on a regular basis, you can begin to separate out the facts and you can begin to have positive reactions while you're dealing with a big issue. If you have one, you can still live a positive life by finding room for it. Remember those two sponges I talked about feeding a positive sponge, letting it grow in your life. Okay. And the final point here is. You have to work hard at this. You really have to work hard to to really not be the problem so that you can achieve more of those optimal outcomes. It's very difficult because it is really like, like think about it. Think about it. Even though I'm a firm believer that a positive, altruistic person for others approach to life is by far and away the most, the most obvious way to be successful to me. I don't care what anybody else does. I don't get sucked into, you know, triggering people in a nefarious, malevolent way to get what I want ever. It makes me just throw up in my mouth thinking about it, right? So I don't want you to do that and think that, but I am going to warn you that the world has become so negative, exacerbated by the ability to send negative message out there on social platform via the internet that we're up against it. We're up against it and we need to fight back against it. So if you want some more optimal outcomes, you're going to have to work hard at this. You can listen to this podcast. You can download the notes. You can take your own notes, but you need to go back out in the world and say, where am I the problem? That's the number one question you want to ask yourself. I asked it, are you the biggest problem, right? But you need to ask yourself, am I the problem? What parts of my life am I the problem? And it feels like most of it, okay, take action right now. If you're hearing this, take action right now. But if you're like, oh, my life's, you know, 50-50, mets and mets, all the terms you people will say. Well, good. Then let's identify first what's positive. Keep feeding that. Keep watering that. Keep working on that. But the other part, you need to go to work on that. So let me summarize it by saying this, okay? We really have to ask ourselves, are we the biggest problem in these variety of contexts in our life, in business, in family life, in social, whatever, in school, 
wherever you may be, are you the problem? And you, you go through these points. Number one, recognizing that our own anxiety and other types of major negative feelings cause cognitive distortions. I want you to Google that and get a list, okay? That cause us to make somebody else or something the bad guy, quote unquote. So the second point, beware of the triggers that cause all that to be exacerbated, he said. And and negative language starts to come out of our mouths. We type it. A lot of us type it now. We type it. We text it. We troll it. All bad stuff. Stop. Solve the problem by sticking to the facts is the third point. And of course, at the end, you must work hard not to be the problem to achieve more of the optimal outcome for yourself. Because if you don't, you keep getting these suboptimal. It's it's a really vicious cycle. If you keep getting suboptimal results, you tend to say, see, there's the evidence that this was all right, that I'm right to be negative. No, you're not. You're the one that caused the suboptimal event um, or outcome most of the time. All right, let me summarize it this way. When we become anxious, afraid, frustrated, angry, or overwhelmed, we tend to look outwards for a bad guy. Then the truth of the matter is that if we allow cognitive distortions to cause negative language, that creates a suboptimal outcome for us. Therefore, you must become aware of how to control these distortions and work hard to eliminate yourself as the problem. Hey, remember, you could take immediate action to get moving in a better direction for your life because we take the notes from these episodes and we post them briefly because I want to keep you up with me at freethinkingtools.com, freethinkingtools.com. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen so that you don't miss out on any insights each time we upload an episode. We also post all of our episodes on our social media channels, especially YouTube. So remember to turn on your notifications for the bonus section and you won't miss the reminders. We'd also appreciate if we would share our content with other people just like you so that they get some of the help that they need and you can join our mission of becoming people for others. And remember, I would love to hear from you. I'd love to hear what's on your mind. What are your challenges when it comes to self-development? And we'll dive into those subjects because this is the bonus section and it has no exact direction. We're exploring together how to better be better at self-development. Hey, thanks for listening. But remember this, I say it every time. Nobody's coming for you. So go get to work on a plan for yourself and your life. And I will see you in the next episode. Thanks for listening.